Okay. Did you all get the recording thingy? Yep. Yes. Okay, so I think this is working and we'll figure it out. Okay. Who is sharing today? That's a mighty good question. Uh, with Amy traveling, I can, or on vacation, I can sort of tacitly take over, but uh, I don't want to steal her thunder since she's here. Yeah, I'm here, but I'm on an iPad. So not the most technical. Like I'm trying to get into the hack MD and I'm waiting for a code to come in. Yeah, it's a bit I um Sean, are all do all our guests have this URL? I don't I don't know who all the guests are. Um, um I mean Jack is here, so he has the URL. Yeah, because um, Jack pinged me on metrics. Got it. So I I passed uh, I gave it to Brian Stenson over, you know, internal work chat. Uh, I, but I don't know who else. Yeah, I don't know either. At this point, I say maybe let's just get started, and then we we can email on that. And after this, apologizing for the mishap, yeah, and telling people to show up to office hours if they want to follow up on this one, and then hopefully the next one we can not not fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. Never underestimate the power of computers to get in the way in a surprise. <laughs> so, um, given that we're uh, about 23 minutes into our one hour meeting, I say we just roll with it. Yes, please. So, uh, I'm going to tacitly chair. Uh, if Amy wants to take it, she's more than welcome. But since she's on an iPad and fighting to computing, is technology. So uh, the first item on our agenda is to announce our new chair, which is Amy. Congratulations, Amy. Uh, we're super excited. Yay. Yeah, the, Thank the you all. I'm surprised. Yeah. yeah, the only reason I'm chairing in your stead is because you're on technology and you asked me to. So uh, let's welcome to Amy. That's going to be super exciting. Did we want to like publish a blog post with some more information and biographical stuff? We should at least make an announcement, um, chair, co-chair, and that way people know who to identify if they need have any concerns or questions. That sounds good to me. And uh, on to our open issues. So uh, clarifying the license of the CentOS spec files. Uh, we have effectively inherited them as MIT from Fedora. And so there doesn't seem to be much that we can say about it other than we've inherited from Fedora and they're licensed to MIT up here. Here is the link to that. So beyond making sure that we've got a clear link in the issue so that we can prove our position. Uh, is there anything else we need to do on this before we close it? Is there anywhere on the website we may want to put that in as well, just so it's easily searchable? That's a good call. Yeah, we should do that. Uh, does anybody know what would be the right place for this? I I just want to make sure we say the right thing because um, it sounded like you were saying that they were all licensed MIT, and that's that's just the default assumption. Um, so there there could easily be cases that vary. Yeah, yeah. I'd I'd be inclined to basically just point. I'll put a doc in there that links to the Fedora information and say that we've inherited it from here, and consult that resource for the actual information. Mm -hmm. I did yeah, when, I I was asking, when I was asking around about it, I asked like if someone could point me to uh, because you can as a Fedora contributor, you know, you can specify that your stuff is under a different license. Um, it just MIT is the default. And so I, I asked for like an example of one where somebody had selected something different so we could see like 
uh, how is that specified? Like, you know, is it in a readme or whatever? Um, and um, nobody that I talked to in Fedora land could actually think of an example of anyone ever doing that. So. Um, I think someone had mentioned that there may have been something under GPL because GPL was what the rebuild used in the very early days, but I couldn't find any actual reference either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is the distribution as a collection is licensed as GPL, but that's a slightly different artifact from the uh, spec files, which is itself a thing that we're way outside of my understanding of legal terms. Like we left that a good five paragraphs ago. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I know about all of these things, which is not the same as knowing these things. Yeah, it kind of sounds like it's a good idea if we can search on the Fedora side and at least find their documentation of where they say they're MIT, but you can choose your own and then link there. I think that's the best bet if they have it. And if not, we can make the suggestion that maybe they should put it up there so that we can then link to it. Uh, sounds good. I can put a link to the Fedora one. Okay, perfect. It's one of those issues where we are next to them and using stuff from them. So anytime we can refer to them as the source of truth, because we're adjacent to them and following along their lines, it's always best to point to there. So if yep. they change something and we end up changing anything, we don't have to change all our stuff. So actually one example uh, might be Koji um, because the Fedora spec file for Koji is derived from, um, I, well, except I don't think, yeah, Koji is not in RHEL, so never mind. But something else might do the same thing where um, an upstream package provides, an ex provides a working spec file that Fedora then modifies um, like Koji does. And uh, then that spec would probably, if, if say that project were under the GPL or LGPL like Koji is, then um, uh, that would probably be inherited by Fedora spec and then by us. It, it would still be interesting to see the, uh, um, the, the Koji thing, just to know how, I don't even know how it's specified, like where it's, like it's, is that put as a, like a comment in the spec file itself? Is it in a, read me next to it in the, so just knowing what to look for even, you know, if, yeah. yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, so hmm. it's, it's implicit in Koji, it's implicit because um, uh, when you get the Koji upstream code, the, the licensing term, it, it, uh, it includes a spec file and the license for the entire yeah. block is LGPL. Um, but I don't think the spec file itself has uh, a license in it, uh, apart from the note that the software as a whole is licensed that way. Yeah, I don't see like a, um, yeah, we don't have a, any sort of licensing terms in Koji spec. So I think it's an oversight. I think a lot of, a lot of projects and a lot, a, a, a lot of people just don't think about this when they're writing spec files about how how they're licensed because they're, they're these sort of odd things mm -hmm. that are adjacent to the license code but not necessarily part of it yeah. so it sounds like we're all basically in agreement with what sean posted eight days ago which is linked to the fedora agreement and uh note that people can choose a different one if they want Yep. So sounds good. Yeah, I think that issue is actually ready to close exactly as is. No extra comments needed. Which uh, brings us over to uh, the uh, inner for a question on Secure Boot, and Brian is here. Brian. Yeah, I don't have anything uh, else on that this week. Um, I, when we had last left off, we were looking at. Um, 
uh, at least starting some shopping for the actual hardware to make this stuff happen for the SIGs, and that's still ongoing. So I don't have an update this uh, this time around. Do you have a like ten TV TA? No. All right, we'll bring these up again the next time, I guess. Okay. And so we've got uh, a few new issues. It's uh, CentOS Stream 9 in WSL, which uh, I believe is uh, effectively blocked on figuring out how uh, to get all of the appropriate lawyers in agreement. As I understand it, Fedora is blocked on the same thing. Yeah, so this isn't any different than what's going on with the other, um, you know, Stream 8, uh, 7, all of the other requests that have, that have happened in the past, we're, we're basically blocked on the same uh, thing internally. We're still asking around, but uh, this is going to be in the same status for a while, I think. Hey, Brian, sorry to interrupt, but um, is it just because of the, um, like the, the, the terms of the agreement there, like there was, I, rem I don't know if anyone recalls what the specific clause was that was causing an issue. Uh, yeah, so there's, there are terms in, in the agreement that um, uh, the, the, the legal folks that we have on our end were uh, not going to let us continue forward with those, so. All right, and do you know where that's being held up? I'm assuming um, it's, you're talking to someone at LSG in Microsoft or within LSG? Uh, that's possible. Yeah, this, this is an issue for Red Hat Legal to sort out, and that's all we can really say. Yeah. Um, okay. If there's anyone that, um, I mean, I, I can interface with the VP there. Um, of LSG. So if there's something that needs to be modified in the agreement, it may be worth, if you wanted to, uh, Josh, to um, try to talk to him to see if he could get that pushed through. Because a lot of times if it's coming like from legal, from, you know, uh, it may just get held up for no reason other than them not agreeing, whereas the VP could very likely modify that agreement for whatever was needed. I mean, I can, I'm more than happy to talk to Matthew Miller, who has been dealing with this for quite some time. Yeah. My understanding is uh, several levels of escalation have gone on and there is no agreement yet. And so. Gotcha. Okay. I can, I can ping Matt too, and then see if there's anything we can do. I just hate to see it get caught up in legal. If someone can just like wave a pen, but uh, yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's gone through several levels, then uh, there may be no other way at this point. So hopefully some magic somewhere happens, but it seems like we're gonna be stuck here for a while. So next ticket on the list is uh, recording historical SIG membership. So that one was uh, from me last time. I believe we've got a ticket open with the infra folks who are just uh, looking for a double check from us that this is something that we really want before they commit uh, time and resources. And yeah, I think we should do this. Yeah. As yeah. I, one caveat um, was wanted um, opt in ability. So if someone yeah. wanted to opt out and remove themselves, we wanted to give them that ability. Yeah. But yeah, people should get credit for their work. And so I, I feel strongly, yes, that this is whether it's what the process is, but some way of them having a uh, track record. So, all right. And our uh, last new ticket is from Davida on the uh, CentOS errata policy. I thought we talked about this 
last meeting as well. But the, the short version of this one was I started, after a conversation on IRC, I started writing up how, uh, how security updates work for Santos effectively and how a few scenarios, how they would work, um, mostly because I wasn't sure I understood it myself. So I wanted to have it double checked. Uh, this seems to be a topic of general confusion. So I think it'd be valuable for the project to fry this up somewhere that we can reference in the future. So we all, so we all agree and understand how it works. Um, I haven't actually looked at that hack MD, so there were a few comments. I still need to go over that. Uh, I still think this is valuable to do. Um, I'd say folks generally agree, and once we're okay with the contents, we should decide where to put this, whether it's the blog or the wiki or, or like centers.org or whatever, and socialize it. Uh, and I just saw Josh that you were replying now. I didn't see your last comment on that. Because... No, it, it's it's okay. Like, I I don't have a problem with um, kind of explaining how sausage is made. That's that's good. The two biggest kind of um, not concerns, but just points of of interest <laughs> that caused me to pause. Were one, uh, the process for eight and nine is different, and so what you've documented is eight, and it's not valid for nine. Uh, and it's a little bit, I don't want to publish something and then like two months down the road, have to publish something different because we explained it for the wrong reasons. Um, and two, I don't understand why we'd center on security issues. Uh, that's a good point. It was mostly because security was the topic of conversation there. We can definitely expand this into cover updates in general. Security I think yeah. is interesting because it's the one with the most special casing because I can't really think of many scenarios where a normal update would be embargoed or would go to RHEL first, while I can totally see that happening for security for obvious reasons. Uh, yeah, do you know I if mean, the nine process is documented slash public yet? Like, can we write um, it up now or should we wait for RHEL nine to go out? In terms of updates in general? Yeah, like, uh, like I think there's definitely value to extending the document to say, this is how it works for eight, this is how it works for nine. But if nine is meaningfully different, is this something we can codify now or should we wait? Um, Brian, like we have, do we have documentation on the nine workflow in general? Cause like the reason eight is weird is because everything is inside out, right? And so mm -hmm. with, with nine developers are doing their work directly in stream. And then that is where it actually is a slight difference uh, because the important and critical CVEs uh, and embargoed work don't go into stream first, but everything else does. And so like from a general update perspective, nine is kind of like how people would expect it to work. So I don't, I don't know that we would describe it that way. Um, at some point in a non-committal timeline in the future, we want eight to look like nine in terms of workflows, but we're just not there yet. So, so it's not like we should concentrate and put this out for nine and ignore eight for now. We yeah, can, or point out that eight is different. Um, in the short yes. term. So yeah, I but Sorry, if you want to, if you want a recommendation for me, um, like I think, I think publishing this as as sort of a blog post and an explanation of how things work for eight in the short term, I think that's probably good. Mentioning that nine is basically what you see is what you get. If you see it out in the build system or you see it in the uh, in the source trees, that is that is literally what we are, uh, you know, getting either shipping or, or just getting ready to ship in, in Stream Nine. And so it's a little bit more transparent about that process. I think that's why yeah. your description of of eight is a a good thing to do. I think what I don't want to do, and I think we talked about this last time. This isn't this isn't a work of policy. This isn't sort of a um, you know anything that we can really adjust it's a description of the the workflows and how they work so yep. i think a blog post is actually perfect for for this sort of thing yeah, yeah and to be clear my goal here was mostly setting expectations and trying to demystify some of these i i agree this shouldn't be called the policy um okay yeah, i mean so I, i'll I, do another I have a... go, Sorry, ahead. go ahead oh, I, was, <laughs> I was just gonna say um i Whenever we say set expectations, I have a, a a bit of anxiety in that the question that we're trying to answer is giving people um, 
kind of forward looking guidance on when they can expect things right and we don't I mean we don't even do that in a public facing manner for rel uh, let alone stream so it it's okay if we describe how the sausage is made how eight is a little bit different and nine is you, what you see is what you get i i think a blog post would be one wonderful for it i don't know that it's going to answer the questions that we get on irc or when when can i get my security fix right like that's the thing that's no, going to keep but it I, honestly, I'm less interested in answering the when because that's obviously like case by case. What I'm interested in is yeah. being able to tell people the why. So it's not out yet. And here's why it's not out yet. And if I have a place I can find that, I don't have to like try to remember how this works or, or yeah. jot it down or when I'm explaining it to people. Um, I agree. We, we shouldn't make any statement on the when because that's obviously going to be on a case by case. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So I'm going to do another pass on that. Uh, and try to incorporate the comments. Uh, if you have, feel free to words me or edit it as you see fit. It's the HackMD you should have access. And then we can aim to get it on the blog at some point in the near future. Excellent. Uh, theory, I tried to summarize that discussion in the notes, uh, fix all the stuff I got wrong. So uh, our ongoing issues, uh, number 71 is uh, for typeface and logo deployment. Uh, somebody from the artwork team responded that they were going to be working on something. And I will confess, I haven't actually followed back up, but the repo they were pointing to exists and it was updated in the last week. So that's exciting. But I'm not sure that there's much else for us to do on that, as I believe this person was supposed to be providing a proof of concept with the new typeface so that we were all open elements. And I don't want to review unfinished work because that's not fair to the person who's doing that work. And uh, then we've got a uh, issue on publication of artifacts. So I think we just need to merge the MR that I made to the SIG guide for that, which I just noticed as a merge conflict now. So I'll rebase that, get rid of the conflict, and then hopefully someone can merge it because I don't have access to merge stuff to that repo. Yeah, I read it over and it looked great to me. Uh, admittedly, I'm not like doing any of the actual hands-on work, so I don't have a great feel for it, but it read like a good guide to me. Thank you. And then we've got our uh, traditional on-hold issues uh, about Azure, uh, AMIs in Amazon China, and uh, some more Lego stuff, which are all kind of locked down things that we're familiar with. And so uh, with that, we've got our open spot for our community architect. How's it going, Sean? Oh, it's going fine. I would really like to unstick this um, new logo stuff. It's kind of, but anyway. Um, uh, yeah, let's no see. Contact on the logo stuff, uh, we can, we can vote over the list if they've got something ready to go and they just yeah. got locked out due to Zoom being weird today. Right. Okay. Um, uh, the the newsletter will go up uh, soon, the monthly newsletter with the SIG reports. I only got um, two out of the six that are scheduled for this month, um, which brings me to my next point, which is... Um, I'm kind of, as I'm going through these uh, first three months of these kind of um, taking stock of the SIGs to see um, which ones are still active and, you know, if, if, if we should be consolidating any of them or, or anything, like I'm not going to go put a hammer down on anyone. I'm just trying to um, see where they all are and if, you know, anybody needs to be unstuck or merged together or, or whatever. So um, that's an ongoing thing I'll be looking at. Um, and then uh, there's just two threads that are on CentOS Deval that I want to just call attention to. One is the, the proposal for using GitLab uh, for the SIGs. It didn't really have a lot of um, uh, responses to it. And I don't know if we should reach out 
elsewhere to reach the SIGs um, on that. Um, if people aren't, you know, following CentOS Devel, um, if people would prefer, I, I, well, I could just reply to that thread, I suppose, and ask if they prefer I reach out to SIGs directly. Uh, yeah, um, I think bumping up the thread and maybe like, I think what we by like SIG hat on, I think it was a bit unclear what would you get out of it as a SIG beyond like, oh, you can host repos on GitLab. That's that's cool. And like, sure, I have no issue with that. And like, we already have, in our case, one repo on GitLab that used for secrets, because GitLab is the only place with private repos. Uh, but beyond that, it wasn't entirely clear what the like long-term goal of this was. Like, is the plan to eventually move all of the SIG stuff to GitLab? Is this just an alternative? Is this like a testing ground for something? Um, is this something we're doing just for automotive, which if that's the case, that's totally fine, but it, it wasn't entirely clear to me what the, like, what you expected people to use this for, I guess. Right, right, that's fair. Um, I, I, I feel, and I feel like it's, uh, some of it's in flux, because I know that, you know, in Fedora land, like some people are kind of moving to GitLab and some people aren't, and so I think there's, there's a trend, but not a um, a wholesale shift. So, um, okay. Um, I, the only other thing is, um, you know, it's not my thing, but Josh's email was it like today about um, about Jira? I think is important for the community. Um, so, just want to call attention to that. And uh, I don't know if there's any any place we should be pushing that further, or if a CentOS Devel discussion is fine. I think maybe uh, that, if we find people aren't responding, maybe email the SIG heads and SCC to the yeah, develop list just to bring it to their attention and also point out that maybe they should be on the develop list if they're not already. Yeah, they should. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say the the GR one, we should share it with Fedora, but I saw you I see now you already copied the bell, so I think we're good there. Like that one probably got enough distribution. Yeah, it's a, it's a you know a pretty fresh email, so I wouldn't expect it. Not everybody's seen it yet, but okay. It's Wednesday, man. Like I, what? I expected, <laughs> I expected to get vitriol and hate like as soon as I sent it. So oh, you sent it on Monday. It's been two days. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, I, so you people don't hear the subject. It? They may not realize <laughs> that issues are right out of com is Jira, so they innate hatred of Jira may not have come out yet. Uh, that was that was not um, an accident. <laughs> <laughs> I can start flaming you if that's what you want, but hey, whatever whatever we need to do to have a conversation, that's fine. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. I even I even expensed flame proof underwear, so it's good. <laughs> Actually, one thing that I think could be useful or interesting if you are open to sharing that, Josh, is why you slash write up are doing this and like why you feel Jira is a better option than Bugzilla for the project and what could this bring long term for the project in terms of improvements or make I don't know making it easier to interact with Red Hat or whatever. That I think could be a worthwhile conversation. You want me to do it here or do you want me to do it on the list? Uh, I mean you're welcome to do it here, but I think it would be useful on the list as a like. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to do that. Go ahead and uh, you know you, you can just ask the question, uh, and I can reply. That's fine. Yep. Yeah, I just came up with this now, which is why. But yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. The the too long didn't read is um a lot of internal pain that we're trying to avoid, uh, and some some company level decisions on how we want to actually collaborate. So, and I'll I'll probably add a little bit more detail to that. Josh, oh. out of curiosity, what's Fedora using? Do you know? Fedora uses Bugzilla right now. Okay. Yeah. Which puts us in the middle. Yay. I mean, I have a funny Fedora because that's what we're using internally. Um, but I don't know if there's any like bridges between the two, if there was anything that we would say need to grab out of Fedora's Bugzilla to get it into our system so we can work on it at the same time, if there were any of those type of situations. 
So, uh, like, I think um, if, if I can speak for it, like from a team lead perspective, I think our um, the ties that we have from the project to the infrastructure to the work that we do in stream is actually a little bit more closely connected with RHEL anyways. And our teams are already working in JIRA. And so this, for us, this is a, well, this makes things a lot smoother if uh, a lot of the front door operations happen directly in JIRA because it gets, a lot of things get translated over anyways. So this, this kind of helps us from a bunch of different directions, deduplicate a whole bunch of stuff that goes first in Bugzilla and then tra translates into random other spots in, in JIRA, so. And is there any issue with an open source project having access to the JIRA to keep everything smooth or are we going to feed things from the CentOS JIRA or is it just that use of tools is easier if it's the same tool? I'm just trying to make sure we're not making accidentally making more work. Uh, so what's what's your concern there? Can you yeah? Can you say your okay, so are any issues that are related to CentOS put into the same Jira instance that we're using internally, or are yeah. we going to have? The, okay, then that answers the question. Well, so as yeah, long we, as everyone has the access uh, to we, the same stuff. Oh, we have. Oh, go ahead, Josh. <laughs> so uh, I say yes, but when I say yes, that, that is the intention. We haven't actually figured out, like, we have a lot of time before this happens. And so that is part of the discussion we need to have is like, how do we actually land uh, like issue tracking or whatever in um, for CentOS stream uh, in a place where it makes sense? Um, the issues.redhat.com is publicly accessible and the permissions on that are per project. Uh, I believe the existing CentOS stream project is defaults to public. Is that right, Brian? Yeah, that's right. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's exactly the project we're going to use. And so that's something we have to figure out. But the intention is to have it all in, in issues.redhat.com uh, and not make people have to like deal with private comments and private things. And like that's kind of anti-theatical uh, to what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, perfect. That is much appreciated. <laughs> Brian, does that like is that kind of what you were going to say? Yeah, that's that's basically it. I think the so there's a like to to pull back the curtain a little bit. There's a whole bunch of activity going on around uh, seeing what you know only Jira means for all, all different parts of the company. And CentOS Stream is is pretty well plugged into that process. And our requirements are you know ex accepting bugs from a, a public place and you know being able to to sort of influence bugs at different processes in the rel uh, in the rel procedure that those are our two main use cases so we're we're well represented there yeah and if a community member outside of red hat wants to work on the bug they'll have the same level of access that they'll need to work on it uh, yeah so that it, it would be just like the really similar to the access that they would have in bookzilla Okay, perfect. That was my main concern. And if you haven't already checked us out, uh, issues.redhat.com, the CS project is publicly accessible, so. Did I uh, roughly summarize that correctly, uh, Brian? For, I, I need to learn Jira so I understand what any of those words mean, but. Then you'll understand all the Jira means. Well, that's, there's always so much to learn. Like knowledge is great. I love learning new things, but if I could learn them at a rate faster than they accumulate on the list, that'd be great. So, uh, Sean, any other uh, community things? No, that's it for me. And on the uh, SIG reports, uh, we had exciting news from the automotive SIG this week. So they published the auto SD distro. I downloaded it and booted it in a VM and it did things. So that's cool. Um, I don't know a lot about automotive Linux, but this is neat. So anyone else give it a shot?
No, but now I feel compelled to, so. <laughs> you should. It's cool. I've downloaded it, but not played with it yet. Very interested in getting into that and seeing what they're doing. Yeah, it, admittedly part of my, you know, not so passive interest in atomic updates and whatnot translates into this, but it's a cool little thing. And uh, anyone have any other business that they'd like to get on the list? Sounds right. like we made the time. Yeah, I counted by 15 <laughs> seconds and nobody nice. spoke up. So I'd say that we had a uh, successful, if adventurous, uh, meeting. <laughs> so, uh, I tried to summarize everything in the notes. Um, please review them for Pat can't type or spell. And uh, add anything in there that I missed or summarized badly. And failing that, I will see you folks at the uh, office hours and uh, hope that everything continues to go well. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. Yeah, uh, thanks for uh, giving me a spot, Amy. I I'll look forward to having you uh, not on vacation so you can run the show yourself, but you're on vacation, so I'm excited that you spent some time with us anyway. Yep. All right, take care. Take care, all. Bye, everyone. Bye, folks.